Hello again. I'm going to be doing a really quick tutorial about 3D modeling on top of your animal rigs that you have. So the first thing you'll notice is that the animal rig is one part. And this is just so it's really easy to model off of and we can access all the tools that we're building on top of it as we're modeling. Um, so I'd say try to keep it one thing. You don't need to separate it. And this also helps us be aware of where the rotational splits are. That helps us to know where and when we want to separate the models and where they're laying on top of the model. All right. So for this model, I actually did have a background image, which I was able to use to help me get the general shape of what I wanted. And I will do the eye extensions in this tutorial because I forgot to do them. So what I'm going to do is take a cube. If you're going to use a cube, please only subdivide it one time because these can get very high poly. Um, and for most of you guys, you already know how to 3D model. Um, so the biggest thing is just keeping in mind um, we're making low poly assets for this game. And even after I apply these subdivisions, we definitely can optimize them a little bit more. Um, so that's going to be a really big thing to keep in mind when you're 3D modeling and making these accessory sets. For the most part, you will not have a background image to go off all the time. What you'll want to do is actually use references from Pinterest, Google Images, that type of thing. Um, so yes, I changed the shape up a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think that's totally fine. Um, we're not texturing these because if we do texture these, it does not allow the players to color them in game. If you'd like to do a little bit of vertex painting, um, feel free, go ahead. If something needs to have a specific ombre or kind of color vibe that you were imagining, feel free to do that. Um, Otherwise, there we have our battle torn T-Rex extended kind of um, keratinous vibe there. And I am changing it up a little bit from the base. And what I'm going to do is apply my subdivision and I'm going to snip away a little bit at the vertices. My favorite tool is the dissolve edges. Um, and I'm also going to a apply an auto smooth just to get kind of more of that like shelly texture almost. Um, so I might actually, um, I might keep it for that one because I have an idea for that, but I'll dissolve it on the last one. And there you see I'm at 106 verts and 200 tries. So you really want to keep an eye on this. You're really going to want to make it your goal to get these as low as you can but have them still look believable, appealing, and well-modeled. You definitely don't want these to lose their appeal just because you try to get them too low poly. Um, so what I will actually do here is I'm going to make a subdivision here, pull that up there. That way I can get like another pointed kind of, um, another pointed, uh, like a little kind of like an offset of a of a point there because I, I see Yayo gave me some like little chips some little chips in it so let's do that remove doubles all the time because you don't know who's lurking around you don't know um when something might be dissolvable. That looks like it rotated over there. Hey, perfect. So that's kind of like a, um, like a little chipped extension almost. I really like that. And so maybe what I might do here is I wanna do like a small tiny cut in it. Um, and I want it to stop there. going to dissolve those because I don't really need these and make sure you guys never have end gons please end gons um they create really funny shadows and roblox and just if you have any vertices surrounding a face and there's more than four of them close them um you should never have end gons they are 
nightmarish. Let's do our best to never have N-Gons. Sometimes I admit I might ha have an N-Gon here or there in my model. <laughs> um, try to avoid it when you can, if possible. I would really appreciate it. Okay, perfect. So that's what I'm going to do for these. And this is on the head. So for example, if this started going down the neck, down, 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 down the neck, then this is what I would do here. Separate it by the rotational piece that it's on, right? So this is going on neck two. This is going on neck one. This is going on head. That's what I would do there. Um, but I actually think I really like this to be maybe like a like a, some jaw scales. So what I'm going to do is thin it out a little bit more. I actually always love to close that last piece. You guys will kind of see like this is literally razored down to the center um, because usually people can't even see that kind of inset piece there. They're not going to see that. So I just connect all the vertices and pull it in. And I don't want to grab anything I don't need there. Merge it at the center, pull it in, perfect. Do it here for this one. And if it lines up really well, you can merge all of those. And look, that's like even more perfect and just kind of hide it inside the head. They're not gonna be able to re resize these or rotate them. So they're not gonna see that. You don't need to worry about that. And then say, I kind of want like, you know, some, yeah, some mean, some mean chin scales. This guy is old and his scales are all nasty and gnarly and overgrown. So I don't want to combine those yet because I'm not quite done. And give him another little scale right here. Perfect. And then maybe I'll layer it. So a big thing you guys are going to want to do is just kind of let your creativity go wild. A lot of these skins, like I said, you won't have reference images. So you'll kind of have to just make stuff up as you go along and just really have fun making your own skins from your own imagination. So I don't know if I like those. So I might delete that. And actually, I like that. Like it's just a simple strip of keratinous kind of chin scales. And that's all I'll do. I'll take these, separate it, take these. If you want, you can apply um, materials. Sometimes that helps me kind of designate like if stuff needs to be multicolor. Take these, export as an FBX at a 0 0.1 scale. Only your selected objects. Make sure to save your studio always. Then we'll go to our asset manager. We will import our file. And we will put our wolf away. We will take our Rex out. Then check this out. We will insert with location. These will put it directly on the place that we modeled it. And that's why it's so important to make sure that the Rex model is always at zero number zero. This means it's centered on the map. The body is raised off the ground. So that's that second number will always um, have a number. And then from here, you guys will attach these um, to the character. And that is pretty much it. You can reference the video I made previously to check out how we rig these on if you have not seen that yet. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you.